the part three on the old Suzuki Wagon R Plus. So today we're going to turn our attention to wheels and wheel trims and I'll show you what they're like because they're pretty rough. As you can tell on the wheels they're just corroded and rusty and they'll get in there with a wire wheel probably and blast them down a bit. But trim wise they're pretty nasty. <laughs> what they look like at the moment not very nice got a lot of nasty scratching curb marks and stuff like that on them i've got on the back and i've had the old hoover out and i've hoovered out all in between all the spokes and got as much off as i can so there ain't no bits of cobweb and all that sort of stuff in the way and moldy green moss and all that sort of thing so i've sorted that much out i've got a little table set up outside and i'll take these over to the table we'll do them one at a time well, obviously I'll just show you the process of doing one, you don't want to see me do four, because it's all the same. And we'll have a closer look, and I'll show you how to do them and how to make them look like brand new, or even better than brand new. So, got a couple up on the table. I always do the worst ones first, because then when you do the other ones, that feel like they're nowhere near as bad to do. This wheel's probably the worst one. So I'll probably attack that one first. Good thing is, the only one that's actually got chunks out the side, which is this one. A few bits on the sides that we're going to have to reshape. But it shouldn't be too much of a problem. We'll sort that out in a bit. The rest is these nasty gouges. So let's do a bit of prep. I'll show you what I'm using. Show you what to use yourself. And I'll sort of try and do it as a DIY style of things. So you can do your own. Okay, so this is what you're going to need. I'm going to use a DA sander. I'm going to put some Abronet 80 grit on there. Use quality sandpaper, not cheap stuff, and it won't rip up on you. Got an airline for blowing down. If you have got a compressor, then do it that way. But if you haven't, if you've just got an electric plug in sander or something like that, that'll do the same job. And basically, I'm going to swap it out, so I'll do your worst ones first. And that will teach you how to do the easier ones. <laughs> now you'll only be able to get to that point, you'll still have some scratches. Take the surface off, take the primer off, get to the actual plastic, any of the deep scratches, leave them, move on to the next bit. Again, same with that, that's all you can do. Plastic. You can use this to reshape because that's tough stuff. Just cut it right back like so. Any little taggy bits, just pull them off. If you have to, get a little knife and cut them off. Oh, this one's tough. Normally, you can just peel them off quite easily. I will have to grab a little knife to cut the edge of that off. Basically what you're trying to do is just keep the shape of the wheel trim, keep the circle. So just skim a bit of the edge off. Like so, and then just sand around the edge. <laughs> Only be 80 grit will actually sand them sort of areas. If you really have to, you can go down to 40 on really bad trims. Okay, 
so so far I'll go that I'm going to do all the other three but I'll do them off camera I'll only cut you in when I'm doing this one which is the worst one and then we'll move on there's a little scratch here on the actual trim so we'll dig that out <laughs> trying to make it smooth with this 80 grit it's only going to get you to strip down what's on top reshape the edges and then get ready for the next stage okay so next of all we go down to a piece of 180 180 grit uh, I don't remember which trim is which now which one's the worst one I think it's this one I'm going to take the 80 off the sander put the 180 on and we're going to do the whole face mm. of the trim. <laughs> what you're looking to do here is smooth everything down, seal all the shiny surfaces. You want to completely strip these, all of these spokes. Don't bother about inside here yet. We'll do that differently. We'll just get the spokes in the middle done. is quite handy. So they're blowing everything down but if you haven't got that you just want some panel wipe or something like that on some blue tissue. Next you're going to be used a bit of 320 sandpaper fold up and get in there. But what I'm going to do I'll show you now. So next I'm going to use a bit of this pad which is called scotch bright and what it basically is is different grades of pads you get different colors you get like red gray blue green there's all different ones i would use a medium grade fold over like so and just get in there you're not going crazy you're just getting the dirt off and any other shine off left on any of the bits that you haven't sanded because if you don't You'll go down the road, you'll start using your car, and the paint will come off on all them bits where you've put all your nice new shiny paint on. That won't stay there very long. It's pretty straightforward, and you do have to give it a good scrub sometimes to get a bit of tar and stuff like that in there. And all sorts of bits and pieces but nothing that can't be sanded off so I think you get the idea so I'll blast through the rest Okay, so as you can see, I've got the whole trim all rubbed down. 
and we're just left with our little scratches and stuff now and that's quite smooth to the touch been in all the little gaps done all these little top bits been in all of these done all them been all the way around the edge i've actually done all the others as well like i say off camera the other two are down there as well so they're all done as well so next come around to where your little valve cappy bit is so you know where you're starting we need to get some filler in these nasty gouges see if we can remove them on the edges on the front wherever they are let's go and do a mix okay so i'm using a bit of dolphin glaze this time which is a upro product not sponsored or anything and then obviously a bit of hardener so i've got that much down and then you just need a small amount of hardener like so grab a filler spreader which i've got a whole box of but you probably just buy a, a little pack of them and mix away and the aim basically is just to mix it until the red disappears it's a bit hard for me to do and hold and show but basically i just keep turning it over until we're completely mixed in and then we go over to the wheels which i'll show you in a sec so as you can see when i've got two hands i can hold one on the paper and one mix and that's a lot easier for me to mix it but we're ready to go so pick out your bits of damage and just start filling them simple as that the old fillers if they're in funny angles like these ones here, what I do, I get some of that and put it on my finger, like so, and I just rub it into the area and then just lightly smooth it over the top. And that should fill the damage. And I just literally do a spoke at a time, really, so I know where I'm going. Obviously if there's any damages on the edges while you're going around, just do that as well. Tiny little scratch in there, but I'm still going to do it. So you want it to look good. There's a tiny bit on the end there as well. And you have to sort of do this at some sort of speed. The warmer it is, the quicker that goes off basically, this will start to go hard. damage inside the spoke on that one and on the outside of the rim there so again use your finger fill up the gap and gently smooth it over over the top only put in as much as you actually need Sometimes after a sand you will need another skim, but sometimes you don't, it depends. It's all down to how well you work it into the scratches and how deep they are, how much they cover. And we've got a few bits of damage actually inside this spoke on this one, so we'll just do that like so. Nothing too crazy, but again, we still want to do it. And that gets us all the way around that one. There's a little bit of damage just inside that spoke there, so we're going to sort that as well. And 
And there's one up the top there. Which we definitely want to get. Just to inspect the rest of your trim, make sure there's nothing else. Put that to the side and do some of the others. So I'll obviously carry on doing this off camera because you just saw me do one. And I'm only showing you the other one. And then we'll come back when it's dry. It takes about 20 minutes, maybe half an hour, depending on the weather. Okay, so next I've got all different ends that go in the drill. This one's a really soft one. This one's getting in awkward places. This one's a really rough one. Basically, they just fit in the end of the drill like so. Do it up. Put a pair of goggles on. Push them ones out of the way. Get your wheel in. And away you go. basically do is just keep going until your rust goes right down and completely disappears and then once you get it to as flat as you can I'll use some of this which is rust treatment basically just get a brush in it paint it all on where it's rusty or bare metal that basically just seals everything up and yeah it stops any of it coming back I've still got a few bits down this side here I've got to get in there a bit better I'm going to use this one on that and get in there and go along there that fits in there nicely but just for purposes of the video as you can see all the bits I've already done I'll basically do that And then you just basically let that dry and you can paint over the top of it. And you can go primer and then paint or you can go sealers, you can put whatever else you want on there. I'll show you what I'm going to do. So here's one I've finished. As you can see I've painted the wheel black and then I've put some tyre treatment on the outside of the tyre. And we've got a nice shiny tyre now that will go to a dull finish and sort of matte black finish on the tyre side of it and then the inside of the tyre uh, the actual steel wheel will stay shiny black so I'll carry on with this one get this to where it needs to be before I can rust treat it and paint it but as you can see it's already soaking into it and making it a much nicer surface to be able to paint it over and then you wax some primer on like a rust treatment primer if you got one or if you can get one and then your choice of colour on top which black is probably the best silver sometimes works I've got my trim sitting down here with all the filler just drying leave them a good half an hour so while I'm waiting for them to dry I'll get on with these so I'll bring you back when we start to sand the rest of the trims and we'll move on with the process on the trims okay so it's been a good while it's probably been about an hour these are all nice and solid now. You can tell if you can't put your nails and stuff in them, then they're nice and solid. And we're going to have a go with a bit of the 180 to start with, just on the filler, and then go from there. just fill the scratches you don't want to sand so it completely comes out so that's enough on that one 
down to 320 and then we'll do the same again we'll just move these right in and blend them right into the trim <laughs> and as you can see the scratches blend in to the plastic you won't be able to feel anything still better see them like that but you won't be able to feel them <laughs> Looks so like you can still see them ones, but no, you can just about feel the edge of them. But to be fair, when you put your primer on, that should cover them up. <laughs> Same with them, they're just slightly there, but not enough to worry about. A couple of coats of primer just in that area should get rid of that. <laughs> That one's completely gone. And then that's the case of doing these bits inside the thing you can't fit in with the sander. So you've got to do them by hand. You can put my little blocks and stuff like that and use different ways, but we'll just get in there like that if you pull the paper up. Get in there like so. Start sanding away. Find it a bit tough on some of these thicker bits. Just get the 180 again. Fold it up. You might want a fresh bit because you've obviously already used this all over the trim. back to the 320 nice little circles if you can in all different angles and that should all just uh, blend in really nicely yep can't feel one little bit of that so when you put your primer on that will completely disappear with that side and basically I've just got to keep doing that around all the spokes where the filler is like this one here I'll have to go back down to 180 I'll get that back to the 320 I'll get this one here to 180 back to the 320 I've got a few of them bits another one here a bit on the edge and I'll do the same with all of them these little tuck corners and then that will be that trim sorted so I'll do that off camera we'll come back and we'll carry on with the next step Okay, so I've done three coats on the parts that I said to you on every trim. So that's 
every one of the spokes here where we've done the repairs with the filler and stuff like that. Now, this time, give it a good old shake. But instead of doing this bit this time, you do the whole trim. So, around the edge. Always do the edge first. Get in your little inner bits so you don't forget them. And then do your middle. And then literally do the whole thing. All the spokes right the way across. Make sure the whole thing is all nice and covered, sealed up. Just load it on, that's not going to hurt on this third coat, you're just covering the whole trim. You can literally go like that if you want to, spin around in circles, just cover the whole trim from all different angles. And you'll end up with a lovely primed up trim like that. I'm going to put that to the side and do the others off camera. And then we'll move on to the next stage. Okay, so our trims have had overnight now to dry off and settle down. And I'm now shaking up a tin of the old U-Pole wheel silver. Not sponsored or anything, just what I use while I'm doing these ones. We use all different makes, depending on what I can find at the time. So, good old shake with the tin. And on your first coat, you just want a dust coat around the whole thing, really. So, a bit around the edge. You're not trying to get on thick or anything like that, you're just trying to get a dust coat of silver on. Get in all your little grooves and gaps, just literally dusting it on. Do your spokes. And that's literally enough for your first coat. Now give that 15 minutes and that will settle down. And then on the next coats, we'll do it a bit different. And then on the coat after that, we'll do it even more different. So let's carry on. Okay, so it's been 15, maybe 20 minutes. That's what it's looking like at the moment. Obviously it's patchy because it's meant to be, but we covered the whole trim. So let's put it back down. Shake the can up a bit. And this time you're looking at putting a really heavy coat on. You really want to cover it. You've got to cover every little bit of the plastic trim basically. So don't go too heavy. You're going to get runs everywhere, but get much closer to the trim like that. Get in your little bits a lot closer. Don't hold the trigger down too much because that's how you get your runs. Alright so that's covered all them bits. Now get your spokes, do them separately and the middle and hammer it on. Like so. And that's basically how you do your second coat. And the coat after this is a completely different coat again, which I'll show you in a minute. Again, leave this 15 20 minutes, make sure it's dry, let it all settle down, let the metallic flakes and stuff settle. And the more you do this and time you put in between, you know, sort of thinner coats. And then thicker coats the better it will come out but as you can see it's completely usable as it is now but we're going to go a bit further okay so this time i gave it half an hour as you can see it's looking really really good and easily usable but there's a little trick to make it go nice and shiny and shinier than what it is now even though it's looking really good you make sure your cans really well shook up nice and mixed so you don't get no spitting and nothing like that 
this time you've got a completely different way of doing the wasp. They right back from the trim, like well back, and you're just misting from quite a distance. Just keep going across. Don't stop and start on any other little bits and pieces. Just literally do that. And then what I do is I walk around the other side and I do it again from a different angle. You're not trying to get any build up, you're just trying to cover the panel with lots of metallic particles basically. So when the light and the sun hit it, that's what you get. And as you can probably see in camera, this is probably going lovely and shiny. And that's where I'm going to stop with that. I'll show you what it's like when it dries up, but as you can see, looks way better than a brand new trim and you can't really get much better and if you wanted to go a step further you can move on to this which is lacquer and you can do a dust coat and then two or three heavy coats and you can make it really really shiny but for this vehicle i want this to be a sort of matte sparkly finish because I don't want the trims to be more shiny than the car because the car is silver. That's just how I like it to look and I'm sure you'll agree when you see it on the car in one of the next videos. I've got a video coming up of doing the bodywork and then obviously you'll see the, the finished product after it's all been buffed and polished and all that sort of thing. So you'll see it all finished on its wheels with these trims on and I'm sure you'll agree looks really really good so I hope this video has helped you out a lot as you can see it's looking really really good quite impressed myself looks absolutely lovely it's only been 10 minutes or so since I last spoke to you but within an hour that'll be really touch dry you better touch it you better move it around etc etc so like I say I hope that's been really helpful for you you can do your own trims even if you go into a shop and buy a new set of trims, they won't look anywhere near the condition that these are in. A lot of them will be a, a solid plastic with like a shiny texture, but as soon as they get wet and a bit of road grime and stuff on them, you have to clean them. They just get all scratched up and don't look very nice. Whereas if you do it yourself this way, they'll stay like that for a year or so, a good couple of years. And if you do get a few scuffs and whatever, you can always go back, re-prepare, dust them over again and away you go again. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon in the next video.